our next speaker knows how to handle developers. With over 13 years of WordPress experience under her belt, she is a seasoned WordPress user. And well before WordPress, she already worked in SEO and digital marketing. She's a well-known name in the SEO and digital marketing communities and typically works with companies in global markets. Recently, she was appointed ambassador for the Google Women Tech Makers program to help inspire women to have su a successful career in tech, just like herself. And working with developers for 21 years has taught her a lot. So let's learn how to avoid friction between SEO and development. Please give your warmest applause to Monse. Buongiorno a tutti. Um, grazie mille per essere qui. Thank you so much to, uh, for everyone to be here. I can see the, the room almost full. It's amazing. And I would like to thank the organization of WordCamp Europe 2024 for putting together all this amazing show. Please give it up for them, please. Big round of applause. Now, I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Who is an SEO here? Who's working as an SEO? All right. Who is a developer, CTO, programmer, uh, product? Yeah. And who's a decision maker here who makes the decisions in the room? <laughs> Perfect. And lastly, who's a student? All right. Well, OK, I see some hands raising. Congratulations to those of you who have decided to come and dedicate yourselves by coming to this conference. And it's a very positive step. Um, step. And hopefully, you will have a list of action points and a contact list also to follow up with when you get back home. Now, I, I could have chosen a bit of a more SEO-y type of, type of topic to discuss today, particularly in light of everything that is going on in the industry at this moment in time. We are living convulsive times now, uh, really, really indeed. But my thing is, no matter how well you know about artificial intelligence and generative AI, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, no matter how well you know about that, what happens is that you will always have the need to implement uh, your recommendations or your requirements, depending on the side of the, of the table that you're working at at this moment, at this moment in time. And unfortunately, what happens is that there are many times where, when, we can't, when we can't implement things, and this is a big blocker for SEOs. It's just, just like any project that cannot be delivered. And if it cannot be delivered, then it's just an, an idea up in the air. Um, some of the blockers, some of the big reasons for, for this is that sometimes communication between, um, between SEO or marketing teams and uh, engineering teams is not the best. Now, Tom Critchlow was referring actually to the fact that um, sometimes senior executives can actually take recommendations as, as if they were being patronized. Who hasn't been patronized sometime in their career? Come on, how many times have you seen somebody come into you and say, well, I have no idea what I'm talking about. At least could you implement this and could you do it right now? And then you have to spend a whole day trying to explain something that they have no idea what they are saying, uh, that you are saying. And uh, yeah, and at the end of the day, you just spend, just spend the whole day being not productive, basically. That's what it is. So this is what um, Tom Critchlow was referring to. And unfortunately, I've been there. And it, sometimes it just doesn't depend on how you actually say things. So um, the other person might actually check them as being patronized. It's been something that is not really useful to them, and, and you are making them feel bad. And this is what um, this is something that unfortunately that's happened very, very often, and it applies to the relationship between SEOs and engineering teams. Um, you have to make it work, but I'll give you a sneak peek. It doesn't always work, and it doesn't always work because I think sometimes it's human nature. Um, and it's not to do with personalities most of the times, at least not in my, in, my, in my experience. It's mostly to do with the 
lack of ability of teams to communicate between each other. Um, sometimes you have to basically meet middle ground, and it's rather difficult to actually do that. So you have to be very careful. Like we have to know exactly that this can happen. It doesn't always uh, work, but uh, knowing the constraints that you're working with will make things a lot easier. So Taco has made a great introduction of me. I really wanted to stress the, um, the, the part where I am an ambassador to the world program called Women Tech Makers, just to help in inspire girls and women alike so they can have a great career in technology, whether they, it is product development, marketing, coding, anything at all, yeah? So um, my point is that we have to collaborate. This is all geared, all, uh, all I'm talking about here today is geared towards collaboration. And collaboration, for, to collaborate with someone, you need to be transparent. You need to communicate properly. It's not easy. Like I said, uh, there's, it's just sometimes, sometimes what happens is that um, there's no opportunity. When I started my career and many years later, um, Developers or engineering teams were sitting there. If you kindly look to um, over your left shoulder towards that corner there, at the far end, that's where they were used to be sitting, eating pizza at the best of times. However, marketing and then SEOs were sitting there. And that corner there over your um, right, hand, right hand shoulder. And that's, and that's the, uh, I mean, the, we were not communicating, we were sitting like um, on the same, we were, we were on the same spectrum because um, part of uh, marketing, which is um, perhaps uh, uh, internal comms, PR, et cetera, et cetera, was sitting next to HR, finance, because they were being seen as business drivers. Whereas I know that technology and marketing and then SEOs were not actually being seen as business drivers. And that actually made things a lot of work, a lot of worse, because um, if, when somebody actually sees a specialist as a, as a business driver, they make things work so that those teams, those specialisms can actually communicate easily. And that doesn't, that doesn't happen very often. Um, they used to tell me, please, Monty, just don't go to them because they are not going to be able to understand you. And uh, it's, it's best to leave them <laughs> to their own devices. And it's like, well, have you tried? Have you actually tried to go out to them and explain to them what you really want and why? And what you are trying to, to, um, to find out? And it's like, yeah. But uh, people who came over to me and said this, they had no idea about marketing, they had no idea about SEO, and they had no idea about websites or not about anything. However, communication improves three things. One, the end product, because both of us work in websites, on websites or mobile applications, so that they can actually be visible, so that they can be appealing, useful to your companies, to our companies, the companies that we're working with or at, um, so that they can monetize. We can all monetize from them, and so that we can actually have a job. Uh, both, of them, both of us work in the same way uh, towards, uh, towards improving that. Then the working environment is, it gets better, because no one likes getting up in the morning and thinking, oh my God, do I need to do I need to talk to this person? I don't wanna I don't wanna go to this meeting. Whereas if the if working environment is actually good, you don't even think about it, right? And then lastly, your internal internal reputation. because uh, if people see you that you are trying to build bridges, um, overcoming situations that perhaps some people actually do find difficult, then your internal reputation goes up and um, yeah, you maybe offer a promotion or um, anything else, really. Um, but this has happened to me as well. And I thought it was like, wow, that's very interesting. I was only doing my job. But for some people, this overcoming the barrier of communication was a huge, huge issue. So think about this, yeah? Um, and this is particularly useful when you are working with um, international people. Because um, I know sometimes it is complicated to communicate with them because perhaps what happens is that, um, I don't know, 
uh, there must be a cultural barrier or something, but at least if you actually make, a, uh, make an effort and know that people like to be talked to you in different ways, uh, they like, maybe they, they like writing long emails, like, as it happens in some cultures, in some others they don't like writing emails at all. Sometimes they prefer lots of examples, sometimes they don't prefer examples. They prefer a lot of theory and a couple of examples, perhaps, to illustrate, and that's it. People like communicating in different ways, so just be aware of all this um, and make an effort. And then, with an effort, everything gets, gets better. Now, a little bit of a story time. I once was working for this high-profile UK organization managing the e-commerce campaign, the biggest e-commerce campaign for them in the year. The website was not a website per se. It, uh, it shouldn't have been there. It should have been migrated a long time ago. And what happened is that the developer came over to me and he, he said to me, I consider this website to be a black box because uh, the, the setup was terrible, there was no documentation, and they all thought it was going to break. So he said to me, if you are going to go inside there and I need to make any changes or fix anything, I'm not going to be able to help you. Like this. I'll finish this story later. In the meantime, I'm going to give you a little bit of context because I like, I like giving, uh, knowing the, the context of everything because nothing, uh, nothing uh, happens in a vacuum, really. And at the moment, it is very exciting, isn't it? We've got, we just don't, don't talk about big data anymore, but it's still there. Technology uh, is advance, advancing. We need to learn about uh, different programming languages, different aspects of SEO, etc., etc. It really is very interesting. But on the flip side, we also have the un uncertainty and ambiguity that actually can bring. And that happens in the context of industrial revolutions, which is nothing to do with the 18th century steel machine. It's actually happened right now. The fourth industrial revolution started in 2010 or 2011, depending on the sources that you, that you start. And that was, that was huge. That was huge. If you remember big data, not big brother, um, you, you, will, you, will, you will remember that um, everything happened so quickly. And it had such a huge impact across every single country or every single industry sector it, it was it was huge and we are still and we are still having that 2020 for some propelled the fifth industrial revolution which is all to do with collaboration and collaboration because the previous um, advancements actually made it possible for um, new business development uh, sorry business models to be set up and uh, so that people could actually work from different places, for example, and so that we had, uh, we had to collaborate with, uh, with people from different nationalities, different cultures, who are actually um, living and based in different places, Sweden, Bangkok, um, Italy, et cetera, et cetera. But collaboration in tech has never been, um, uh, has never been um, uh, you know, uh, something strange. You, we all know about JIRA, Atlassian has about, last time I checked, 45% of market share. So you, you, that, that, will, that will give you an idea. We have Asana. Even artificial intelligence is being thought or proposed as a um, collaboration tool so that you can get um, you can get enough information quickly so that um, certain, um, certain um, um, industries can actually advance. And if you are not technical enough or you don't have enough time, there's always people like uh, David Mas, who has made it possible to, for people to understand uh, that they can actually get a, a prompt for marketing. Um, so you can have a look at this. However, there is also what we call digital fragmentation. And the digital fragmentation is uh, to do with two things. One is regulation. Regulation which is not making it possible for the free flow of data and talent that we need at this moment in time in this, um, in this uh, business setup, in these business times that we are living in. Um, and so what happens is that we are having to cope with different situations and uh, regulations are so restrictive, sometimes they are unfair, they're being made by people who don't know about technology nor about data, et cetera, et cetera, and that is causing um, or threatening innovation, according to some. And the second bit is um, us having to learn about Python, about R, about the, 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 the XYZ. There's so many things that we need to learn. It kind of makes us think sometimes, well, 
will I be able to actually hold my job within the next five years if I learn Python right now? Or anything else, really. Um, so um, sometimes, uh, if you want to be, if you are an, if you are an SEO, an offside SEO, you want to be technical SEO, you have to learn industry standard tools. And um, all those tools actually do change all the time, because how many iterations have we had of Sidebulb or Screaming Frog already? You know, um, so uh, but it's, it's just it brings a little bit of uncertainty um, um, to the to, to our lives as well, and we need to learn to 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 um, to, the, um, to to navigate that. Both of us, SEOs and engineering teams. So what I'm, I'm getting at is that everything is fantastic. It's it is uh, it, it's great. Um, we can learn. There's so much excitement, and we can monetize from all of these things. But um, it can actually bring in poster syndrome or even conflict. And if we bring com if there is conflict, when we are conflicted, there is no communication because our communication skills go out of the window rather easily. Um, one of the causes of project failure is lack of communication, yeah, or conflict actually, yeah, as well. So we have to be very careful with this because if we are entrusted to actually deliver a project, we need to be able to deliver it because otherwise our jobs may be on the line. We have to be really, really careful with this. And our credibility as well. And again, um, communication is actually part of the reasons why sometimes um, uh, projects do not get delivered. Um, we don't really, we are not transparent enough. We don't know, or people, other people don't know what we are trying to do, etc., etc. So again, it's true for SEOs and engineering teams, but also there is this bit I was referring to earlier about, um, about uh, perception and reputation of our work. I know, um, you know this tweet here is not referring to the last announcement of ChatGPT on May the 13th. It's referring to an earlier announcement. People were starting to think that perhaps they wouldn't have a job. And that is a terrible thought, a terrible feeling as well. Yeah, it's really, it really is very important that, um, that we, are, we are learn how to navigate all this situation. And also, um, I know that um, IT and developers uh, are normally called in to, 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 to fix printer jamming. I hate printers, they're evil. But this is what it is. Now, for SEOs, it's exactly the same situation. And now we are having a lot of trouble, a lot of time. We're having, um, yeah, it's, it's not the best of times because we can't really seem to be getting at clients anymore. They are becoming a lot more skeptical and a lot more negative. And so we are having a lot of trouble to explain why we need to do SEO, why we need to do localization, why we need to do X, Y, Z regarding, um, regarding everything that we have been doing so far. And they need to continue doing that. Because, you know, when you look at Google and see all these um, wrong results, the SERPs, you kind of think, well, is it worth it? And also, where is my traffic? Where is my traffic with all these filters? And we also have um, AI overview from May the 13th, the 14th, before it was called something else, and the results were slightly different, and we were kind of nervous as to when it was going to be rolled out outside the States, onto Europe, for example. I think somebody said that they had seen an instance of AI overviews in the UK a couple of weeks ago, so maybe it is closer. But also we are having to learn about this, and also clients, our possible clients, our inter internal colleagues as well, are getting wind of the situation of with perplexity and everything. So if we've got perplexity, maybe we don't need an SEO. And that is terrible. Like I said, it's, it's just uh, a partly a reputational issue, to be perfectly honest, because just like the rest of marketing, we, are, we seem to be unable to sell ourselves. Like, we can promote your brands, and do that very well and monetize, but we seem to be unable to actually do the same with our own services, with our own work. And that is a contradiction, contradiction in terms, but it does happen at all times. And a reason, a very good reason for us not to be able to get internal buying enough to, um, to implement and implement promptly and quickly. Um, so now, I, I ran, I ran a um, round table a couple of years ago. I wanted to find out from CTOs 
developers, products, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, what their hurdles, the most common hurdles were, because it is important. It was important to me to see whether I could actually see common ground in there, and and well, these are the most frequent frequent ones. Do they sound familiar to you? My five-year-old neighbor can actually do bet this better than you. I can't seem to find this, um, but neither can you, right? So what is this? Explaining to me in um, in English, plain English, please. Cannot understand anything. Could you please do it now? Could you please do this now? Do it, do it, do it, because. I have no idea what I'm asking you, all, but just just do it because um, people are pressing me. Yeah, and similar. Uh, but this is. Um, uh, I mean, I've got you've got many that that lines as well, but so do they, and they just don't care. Just do it. The same for SEOs. Absolutely the same for SEOs. Every single one of them, and you can add more to the list if you want to. Uh, and it is terrible, really, because when you think about it, collaborating is good because we can work together on the products that we are um, that we are working on, websites and mobile applications, monetize from them, make them visible, make, it, make them appealing, not pretty. We are not the coloring in department. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is what collaboration does, and it is really useful for our own companies and for ourselves as well because it's more satisfying, really, collaborating than not. Because we don't really want, at the end of the day, to publish anything um, that is not going to be useful, that people are not going to find interesting to use or easy to use, right? Because um, uh, you know, it's, it's our own professional professional um, thoughts, really. Uh, that everybody likes having a good impression or, uh, of everybody else. So this is what we call Conway's law. So um, sometimes we see websites or applications that are not looking good, or cannot be um, used properly, just like this one. Anyone who has been in the UK, who's UK based, um, will remember Kath Kidston. And I remember thinking, oh my God, what is happening with the localization of this website? And everything else, to be perfectly honest. And it's not to do with um, uh, the, the skill set, uh, any, any technical skill set or anything. It's just that the implementation was not fantastic. And, um, and the reason for that is that um, uh, PwC were auditing them, but then the impression from outside was not the best. And we don't want to get that, right? Now, so. Uh, what, what, what do we need you to do? From our point of view as an SEOs, we need you to help us doing a fantastic, solid technical implementation. Because no matter, no matter how difficult things are on the SERPs, on the search engine results pages, no matter, uh, no matter what happens with this generative search, AI overviews, you name it, we still need a fantastic implementation because otherwise, our websites and mobile applications cannot survive. And this is, this is a fact, yeah? And also we need advice and support because we don't know what you do know. <laughs> it's as simple as that. It's not, it's not, our, it's not our job. It's not, it's not something that we do for a living, but you do. And uh, there is this overlap between SEO, technical SEO and um, development, and this is where we actually meet middle ground. We do definitely need that. Some examples, uptime, accessibility, really important. The technical aspects of accessibility is, is actually your bag, not ours, but we kind of work together so that we know what to implement and why, really. Some examples, some examples. Website migrations, particularly the, the two riskiest examples, servers, um, and the platforming. We definitely need you there so that we can do, the, you know, the, the just the URL the redirections, uh, cyber security, and uh, things like technical implementations as well, um, integrations with other with other tools. Um, just imagine somebody who's been using Sitecore and wants to wants to use um, WooCommerce and um, uh, WordPress from now onwards, and they are not acquainted with that. So how do they know? How would they know what to do if you don't advise them on technical limitations, for example? Yeah, this is just a few examples. You can add more to the list because, and this is really important. 
SEOs can also help building both websites and um, mobile applications. This is what we do for a living, and this is also a big blocker that we have found with you as well. So you kind of think, oh, we are more marketing, and we are marketing, but it's more the technical side of things. And uh, yeah, it's an overlap, but this is what we do. So now, what has worked to for me to be able to um, col uh, collaborate, we need to communicate with transparency and uh, show good willingness and everything, but we also need to have some compassion. Compassion, um, just uh, thinking about, you know, uh, people have different deadlines, uh, people like to be talked to in different ways as well, in the appropriate way. You don't really want to, you don't really want to be talked to in a, in a way, uh, in a certain way, so what would you actually talk to them, to other people in a, in a different way, in a, in a bad way, right? It isn't easy, but it is necessary that we actually do that, because again, our jobs may be on the line if that website or mobile application is not exactly good, and, um, and our companies cannot monetize from them. So this is a suggested wor workflow that I have been uh, using, I have been following, of course you have to adapt to the situation, but first things first, find out who you need to talk to in the first place. In some companies, and this is me talking to SEOs at the moment, in some companies, um, the main person uh, looking after development is called business analyst, in other companies it's a, a project manager. So you just find out who that person may be, have a, have a ch chat with them, agree a, a workflow, meaning maybe just regular meetings, perhaps not every day, or maybe not even every week, because it's, it's, it's boring and there might be nothing to say, but maybe after a couple of days, I meant just, uh, uh, just attending to stand-ups and meetings so that people can be on the same page. And I know this may sound boring, but after a while you just kind of do this naturally. It's just about being aware of what the other person is actually doing and why they are doing it, because uh, um, we need to tell you as SCOs that we need to make some requirements um, so that um, websites and mobile applications can actually be visible and can actually work and can meet uh, accessibility standards and usability standards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, what do you think can go wrong here? <laughs> Absolutely everything. Absolutely everything, particularly the feedback loop. And this is really, really bad because um, you normally need to aim at having a fantastic feedback loop so that um, it's, it's positive, it's in a, um, uh, you know, it's positive that you actually uh, get to hear what, what they are up to, if there are any issues, um, security issues, for example, that you need to, yeah, you need to be aware of so that you don't actually go with more requirements or chasing them all the time, right? But this is especially these parts that actually requires a lot more attention because it's just like with any project. If you start a project, you start with the planning, you do the requirements, et cetera, et cetera, but you do not implement them, then you have nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, and you cannot monetize. It's really important that um, the implementation and the correct Q&A is, uh, is actually being done. And of course, uh, yeah, the, um, the, the feedback, the feedback aspect of it. Because it's actually satisfying from a personal perspective to think about it like that. So yeah, like I said before, communication, involving people from the very beginning, do not hold things back. Uh, why would you just be open, transparent, um, have as many meetings with them as, you, as they prefer. Some people, uh, some people do not like emailing, it's as simple as that. They don't like emailing, and they would barely um, look at emails. So just um, you know, idea, um, ideate something else, um, some other type of collaboration. But feedback loop, feedback loop on both sides, super important. Because again, we do. This is what we do for a living. It really is very important that you understand that we are marketing, but we build websites and um, mobile applications. So, just a few takeaways. Collaboration improves your 
uh, the products that we are talking about, the end products, the work atmosphere so that you, everybody actually works fine and you can have uh, the time to, and the opportunity to, um, to bring up new ideas or concerns, something that is happening because it, there is no free flow of information. Things are actually quite complicated. Uh, it, really, it really is very, very complicated. Uh, the industry is changing all the time. So just think about this. And also, lastly, um, your own ego. Uh, it's, it's actually a lot easier if you collaborate and build bridges rather than burning them. Yeah? You can learn from each other as well. Remember that everybody is coming from different cultures. It means that everybody will have a different approach to technology, a different approach to SEO. We'll see things from a... Um, from another point of view, perhaps, um, they will be more aware about certain regulations, perhaps. Uh, they will be more aware of certain other ways of doing things, which also comes with experience, with experience. But then if somebody else has already had experience in your team, why not? Yeah. Um, yeah, just be aware of how, how they actually communicate, so how people like being communicated to. So um, if you have noticed, I have tried to do a, a bit of both things that I mentioned earlier, theory and uh, examples, uh, so, that, um, so that it's easier to understand to, um, for everyone, by everyone, everyone. And then I'll, I'll finish the story. So um, it started off a slightly tough for me, but it was mostly because most people in there had got wind of the um, troubles with the website, and they just thought, oh my goodness, if anybody actually touches that, it's going to break. It didn't break at all. I actually proved to them, and I gained their trust after doing so, that nothing could actually break that easily. Uh, but it's also true that the implementation was really, really shy. Um, and also the developer ended up confiding in me with his with sound problems, particularly one when a word line had not sent him a line of code that we need to fix the payment path the all important payment path. Yeah, so we actually work together on that. I helped him out. And this is how, um, this is how things actually ended, really. Everybody was, everybody was quite happy. Because uh, again, it doesn't always work, but it ne we need to try. Uh, one time when it didn't work for me was when um, our common, cli common client was actually uh, difficult, difficult to get hold of. So the developer and myself were having a very a conversation every, every now and then, but I was seeing that he was not implementing the stuff that he had agreed to implement, particularly because we were preparing to, for a migration. So I was especially nervous. I'm biting our, my, my nails really. And uh, he found out that, I found out that he was not talking to the, to the, um, um, to, the, to the client, to, to his client and to my client, despite being on the same building. But then the client was not around. It was really difficult complica and complicated situation. We managed to sort it out, but it was mostly because we actually stuck together. And that was really satisfying as well from a personal perspective. Because think about the complexity of the um, of the ecosystem, the digital ecosystem, with things changing all the time from a technical perspective, from a regulatory perspective, cultures are different as well. If we do not, we do not actually make the effort, then we will actually fall behind. And from a professional perspective, it might not be useful to us anymore. So, um, I've been Monserrat Cano, international SEO, digital strategist. Um, if you have any questions, a better demande, or if I can actually have any business here and, and everything, just get in touch with me, ask me around. I will be around for a, for a few minutes. Uh, de question, preguntas, um, anything? <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. I think we can see if there's a few questions from the audience. We have some time. So if you have one, raise your hand. We have a mic runner. He's really fast um, to bring the mic to you. Yes, we have a question on the right. You have to answer them. I don't. You, you answer all the questions. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mentioned perplexity. Um, I, think, I think perplexity is pretty great. 
have you, have you kind of noticed a shift in um, the traffic that you see as an SEO person that suggests that maybe more people are using, relying on things like perplexity rather than making their own searches, just let perplexity do it for them? So could you... Just, have you, have you noticed any difference in the kind of traffic that, that, that you get through websites, that some of it's coming from like okay. AI tools like, like perplexity? Well, um, traffic uh, is, is, slightly, is slightly unrelated to this, but traffic does change all the time. So we are not getting the same amount of traffic at all times to every single website. It, it has never happened, really, because of a variety of, of issues, really, seasonality, et cetera, et cetera. But also because, uh, yeah, Google sometimes change, competition changes, et cetera, et cetera. What I was referring to is that is the fact that the changes in technology can actually affect the way clients, internal and, and uh, external, perceive the S if you perceive SEO, perceive technology. Because at the end of the day, everybody wants to sell, and they are um, more keen on, yeah, just, just selling. And they think, OK, more traffic, more sales, which actually is not the case. It's not usually the case. Because more traffic, if it is qualified, more qualified traffic, then fantastic. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, does, it does change all the time. It's, um, I, think, I think our job is basically making sure that people are in line with uh, developments, things that may happen, um, so that um, they understand the need to keep on doing what we are doing. Um, but also, yeah, uh, as I said, um, traffic change changes over time. Does that answer your question? I see a thumbs up. That's a good sign. All right, we do have time for one more question, if there's any. Now's your chance. And otherwise, you'll be around the entire conference, right? I will. Perfect. So then uh, people can find you in the hallway and come to you with all their questions. Yes, definitely. Uh, before sending you off, I have to jump off stage quickly because we have a very special gift oh. from the organizing team <gasps> to thank you very much oh. for your talk. Um, I'm not going to spoil you. it, but I'm sure they all want to know what you're getting, so they'll find you later to ask. Come find uh, me. <laughs> but it's, it's definitely uh, something especially for, uh, for from Italy, and it will be very useful when you come back to Italy. I see. So, Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. Also at home, thank you very much. Uh, we'll have a short break Grazie in this room. Grazie mille. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a short break in this room and then be back uh, in about 10 minutes for our last speaker before lunch.